I'm a 17-year-old high school guy with a weak body. I live in a small town in the Philippines, and this town is surrounded by rice fields with a highway going straight across it. Part of my usual weekend routine is to go jogging early in the morning, sometime around 5 a.m. My usual jogging route is from my house, somewhere in the middle of town, to a small hill with a wonderful view of the town in the morning. To reach my destination, I would have to jog on the side of the highway. From time to time, a fog that lasts about an hour would appear on the highway, and once you're inside of it, you could see only about 10 or 15 feet before it all goes white. So one Saturday, I decided to jog. I invited one of my friends to join me since he follows the same route anyway. We left home at 5 a.m. and proceeded to the highway. As usual, a thick fog blanketed the highway. The cars that would pass had their lights on, and there were several one-ways because of the road repairs. As we entered the fog, we decided to jog along the side of the road and pass a couple of roadworks. All was well at that point, a bit exhausted, but otherwise fine. We barely encountered anybody else, and usually they're just fellow joggers too. Then we came across another roadwork, and we saw this guy crouched down on the asphalt. He was wearing a dirty orange vest, and similarly dirty hard hat. We couldn't see his face, but we decided to ignore it. He looked as if he was fidgeting with something in his hands, so we thought he was just holding a few tools or something. Also, there was nobody there but us, myself, my friend, and that guy. The fog was still thick as hell. My friend signaled me to keep a distance from the guy, and I followed him. When we got closer, we heard him humming a strange tune under his breath, which in itself wasn't that weird. But boy, were we wrong. As we got closer and closer to the guy, he started acting erratically. He stopped for a moment as I passed him. Then he started laughing. It wasn't a regular laugh. And it sounded sinister and a little dry. It was pretty loud, so it really freaked us out. We didn't increase our speed at that point, as we thought he was just toying with us. But he didn't stop. He just kept laughing and laughing, and we knew it was beyond a prank. I can't describe his laugh more than I just did, but trust me, he wasn't faking it. We didn't look back. We were speeding up now as we were starting to see the hill. I was gasping for air, but I didn't know what would happen if I stopped. I just forced myself to keep running and running, and my friend did the same. He was probably 50 meters behind us when I decided to look at him. He had stopped laughing, but now he was standing straight and was glaring at us. He called out to us in an enraged tone. That's when the adrenaline kicked in. We just ran and ran until we reached the hill. In hindsight, I don't know how I was able to push myself that far for so long. When we finally reached the top of the hill, we were exhausted. I nearly collapsed on a cement bench and stayed there for another hour. Like a breath of fresh air, my friend laughed in a more comedic manner, and I followed suit. We laughed the whole thing off while waiting for the fog to lift. When it did, we walked home. I hadn't had breakfast yet, so I was pretty hungry. As we passed the roadworks where we saw the guy, he was no longer there. The only people that were wearing construction outfits were the ones signaling the traffic, but none looked like the man we saw. As I got home, I told my parents what happened, and they said it was probably just another nut job that stole a construction outfit. Since then, I've never gone jogging into a fog again. Thanks for reading. And highway guy, let's not meet ever. So this was quite a while ago. I was I'd say about 11 or 12 when this happened. One night, my mom and I had decided to get food from a pizza place around us that was close, but not close enough that they would deliver to us. The trip there was fine. We got our food and were on our way home 
when we decided to stop at a gas station. When leaving the gas station, a dark burgundy car pulled out behind us. At first, obviously, this didn't raise any red flags, but as we kept going and getting closer to home, this car was still following us and we were starting to get freaked out. It followed us the whole way home. Once we got home, we pulled in and this car just stopped in the middle of the road a bit behind us. My mom told me not to get out of the car. We sat there for about 10 minutes until finally the car decided to drive past us. I was so scared I didn't look at the car. I didn't want to see who was in it. They turned at the next block. My mom told me to get out of the car and to run to the house as fast as I could because she was worried they were just going to drive around the block. We got out, ran to the house, and locked the door. I don't know if they ever came back and I never saw that car again. It was one of the creepiest things to ever happen to us. So, I think it was around 2018 to 2019 when this happened. I don't really remember the year but I remember everything leading up to the moment in vivid detail. I used to live on a farm for a few years. I moved away a while ago, but one day my aunt was going to take the people who worked on the farm back home, as they didn't live there, and she asked me if I wanted to come with. I said yes. About 30 minutes before we went, I saw a figure in the kitchen doorway. It was crouched down on all fours, almost in an animalistic way. I couldn't make out any facial features or anything. I only know it had an almost feminine build. Long black hair, black eyes that I could only see the glints in the dark of, and deer antlers protruding from its head. After that, I was obviously freaked out, but fast forward to after we dropped the workers off at their houses, we were on our way back home, and I swear, I saw something crawl across the road before the pickup truck we were in flipped and rolled. Luckily, neither of us were seriously hurt in that accident. Neither of us sustained long-term injuries that were going to cause us problems later in life, but it traumatized the hell out of me. Can anyone maybe give an explanation of what I saw that day? I have been looking for answers ever since. This happened years ago when I was 19. I'm now in my mid-twenties. I still remember this very clearly because of how creeped out I was. Back then, I was living 600 plus miles away from my parents in a different state. Even though there was a distance, my mom and I still talked on the phone at least twice a week. And we were still really close. So when we found out her cancer was back, I didn't think twice about dropping everything to drive down to see her. A plane ticket would be too expensive, and I had a 10-year-old Toyota that might have been a bit beat up, but it still got me from A to B cheaply and quietly. My parents weren't thrilled at the idea of me driving the 11 hours by myself, but my mind was made up, so they offered me a deal. I would stop at every rest stop every 2-3 to three hours to stretch my legs and call them, and in exchange for this courtesy, they would pay for my gas. If I didn't call within the three-hour window, though, they would assume I'd been in an accident and call me repeatedly, interrupting the audio or podcast they knew I would have on. I accepted the deal, and that's why I was at this particular rest stop at 2.45 a.m. This was actually one of the nicer stops, well-lit, multiple vending machines that didn't have huge cages around them. The payphone wasn't broken, and it looked clean. There were a couple of cars there with people sleeping in them. I still had 15 minutes before I had to check in with my parents. I got out of my car and stretched, and then almost jumped out of my skin when I heard a man's voice right behind me. 
Miss, can I ask you a favor? I turned around, and he's leaning against my car. I have no idea how he got there so fast. I didn't see him when I parked, but there he was, uncomfortably close to me. He looked to be in his forties. He didn't look dirty or twitchy. He was too close, but his body language wasn't screaming, threatening. And even though I was 19 years old, barely over 5 feet, and at that point in my life, 110 pounds soaking wet, and even though I had already binged on a lot of true crime media, and knew the dangers of a girl my age alone at night with an out-of-state license plate, my dumb ass asked what he needs. He told me that he accidentally locked his keys and his phone in his truck, and if he could just borrow my phone real quick to call his friend, it would just take a second and it would really help him out. And I almost handed him my phone. I was reaching into my pocket to hand it to him with a Pollyanna, no problem. And then I actually looked at his face. Like I said, this rest stop was surprisingly well lit, and this guy looked really normal. Except for his eyes. He had dead shark eyes. You know what I'm talking about. It's the Ted Bundy, Dick Cheney, actress in a Glade commercial who's trying to convince us she's in love with a dumbass who doesn't know how air fresheners work eyes. They're smiling, but the eyes are vacant and creepy and staring way too hard. I got that feeling, that runaway feeling. I knew immediately not to hand this guy my only way to call for help. So I put on my best customer service smile and told him, Oh my god, I'm so sorry, but I don't have a charger. I need to save all my battery for the tracking app my parents have on my phone. And I need that juice to call my parents, which I actually have to do right now. But good luck. And I turned and walked about 20 feet away. And he doesn't leave. He was still just leaning against my car, watching me. And now, I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to leave him alone with my car, because he creeped me out and he has a serial killer face, so going to the bathroom is out. But I also wanted to get away from him, prove I'm not gonna help, and maybe he'll leave. I could technically get into the car, but I would have to get really close to him unless I crawled over my passenger side seat and he's not moving, so I did the first thing that popped into my mind. I called my dad, and my dad, for the first time that night, did not pick up the phone. When I heard his voicemail, I glanced back. The guy still hadn't moved. He was just staring at me. So I faked a phone conversation with my dad. I angled my body so that the guy couldn't see that I'd hung up the phone and loudly said I should be home in about 30 minutes, when in reality, I was still at least four hours away. I mentioned exactly where I was, and reassured the fake caller that this was a good rest stop with plenty of lighting and a couple visible security cameras. The guy still hadn't moved, and I'm running out of steam on this fake conversation. In the years since, I've thought of a lot of things I could have said while pretending to talk to my dad, but in that moment, I was beginning to seriously freak out, and my mind went blank. So I hung up and didn't know what to do. I had hoped the fake phone call would scare him off, but he was still leaning against my car. I stalled for another couple of minutes. I bought cookies from the vending machine. I walked around a little bit. At this point, he's been leaning against my car, staring at me for at least ten minutes. I honestly debated waking up one of the men sleeping in their parked cars and asking them for help. And just the thought of having to wake someone up to help me to get into my own damn car annoyed me enough that I stopped stalling and headed back to my car. I decided that unless he touched me, I'm just going to pretend he isn't there. He waited until I was unlocking my car before he started talking to me again. He told me again that he really needs to use my phone. He's stranded here unless he can call his friend to bring the spare keys. He's not angry or begging. His voice sounds weirdly friendly, but he's been creepily watching me for way too long while blocking my exit, so I'm not falling for it. 
I almost pointed out the working payphone just in case I'm wrong about this and I was being a bitch to a guy who needs help. But then he leaned forward as I was getting in and I lost all nerve and slammed and locked the door as fast as possible. He didn't move until I started the car and put it in reverse and then he finally stepped back and let me pull out. I didn't even have my seatbelt on. I was so focused on getting away from him. And then, halfway out of the rest stop, my mom called me. My mom, who would freak out if I don't pick up and who was already sick and I needed to put on my seatbelt. I could still see him in my mirror. He was standing right next to where I was parked with his back to me. He was far enough away that I felt okay parking again to answer the phone but I kept my engine running and I kept watching him. I don't want my mom to worry, so I told her everything's fine. Where I was, my ETA. Now that I was in my locked car away from him, I was beginning to feel like I overreacted. She scolds me about speeding and I tune her out because the guy is moving now. As my mom lectures me about road safety, I watched the guy cross to a truck, unlock the door, and get in. The keys being locked in no longer seemed to be an issue for him. I watched the truck head back out to the freeway and drive out of sight. I had to pretend to be fine to not upset my mom. I didn't get back onto the road for another 20 minutes, and when I did, I didn't speed. I did not want to see that truck. I found out years later that the closest city to that rest stop has a major problem with sex trafficking and that girls who look like they don't live nearby or maybe look like they're living out of their cars tend to be targets. I don't know if that was what was happening or if he was just trying to scare me into handing over my phone. Either way, creepy guy at the rest stop, let's not meet again. When I lived in Madison, Wisconsin, I lived across the street from Camp Randall, the football stadium. On game days, they'd shut our street down and people would flood it, drinking and partying. We'd sit on our porch and drink beers and Bloody Marys with the crowd at nine in the morning. Good times. But one day, there was this girl walking briskly up the sidewalk, sobbing, makeup smeared all over her face. She was covered in dirt like she'd been rolling around in it, head to toe. She didn't look beaten or anything that might have suggested a brawl, just covered in dirt. And the thing was, she was dressed for game day, all decked out in her Bucky Badger stuff, and she had her hair up in little buns. Whatever happened to her had just happened, and given that she was, despite her condition, a very attractive girl. Our minds went to the worst place, that she'd been sexually assaulted. I lived in a big house with seven guys and a girl. At the time, it was just the guys on the porch, and given what we feared might have happened, we called for our female roommate to see if the girl needed help. The girl just shook her head, said I'm fine, and kept walking. It's not as creepy as other stories, but still... Given the situation, the sight of the girl, it's hard to think she wasn't assaulted. I still think of her when I think of my time at that house. This seems like the right place to tell this story. It happened back in 2013. It was about 8 or 9 o'clock and I was on my way home from a pals. I was sat upstairs at the back of the bus. There was only me and one other person on the top floor of the bus and he was sat near the front on the opposite side. When I got up to get off the bus and walked from the back towards the stairs, he called me. I don't remember exactly how he asked, but he was asking for a lighter. I walked up to him going through my pockets and told him I had matches and handed them to him. He took them from me 
and just stared at them for a good few seconds and then handed them back to me and said something along the line of, don't worry. The time it took him to decide not to use them felt very strange and the eye contact before and after just felt intense. I walked down the stairs thinking what the hell was up with that and then got off the bus. I told a couple of people how weird it felt and described what he was wearing. A zip-up black hoodie with a knockoff Hardy-style tiger on the chest. Fast forward about a week and there's a fatal stabbing on a bus in my city. A young girl on her way to school was stabbed to death on the top deck of a bus. Stabbings are pretty common in my city, but a young girl being killed on her way to school, that's big news anywhere. They showed a photo of the suspect being arrested, but you can only see the back of his hoodie. Straight away, I think that's the exact same Ed Hardy knockoff, and start wondering if it's the guy I had seen. When they released more photos of him from the front, I knew it was him. The scary thing is, when it transpired, he had recently been let out of a mental health facility. He hadn't been given any support and had been sleeping rough on buses. I've had many interactions with mentally ill people and dangerous individuals, but this one is the one that stays with me. Even though the interaction wasn't much, it felt so strange. I always wonder if he was seeing how I reacted when he asked me, hence why he didn't use the matches. Who knows, it's just a sad story really. Rest in peace to the poor girl who was murdered. Her name was Christina Edkins. She was just 16 years old. A man knocked on my apartment door because he thought I was a prostitute. I live in an apartment building, and I guess there was a girl with a similar name to mine with long brown hair who moved in, and she was doing dates at her apartment through the internet. He thought I was her and followed me to my apartment. He said he went down to look at the register in the lobby and saw my name, and our names were really similar. Think Kristen and Christine or Brianna and Brianne. Anyway, he followed me like I said, and then looked at the registry downstairs and just assumed I was this woman. So he knocks on my door. I answer it and he tells me it's his birthday. Now, keep in mind, I have no idea about any of this. And so I say, oh, okay, happy birthday. So then he says that he would give me $60 to go and hang out with him and his friends and that if I wanted to party, he would supply it for me, and that he and his friends would pay me for anything extra. I was completely confused. I said, What do you mean? What are you talking about? I don't want to go to your birthday party. I don't know you. To which he replied, Well, I saw your ad on the internet and replied, and you gave this address, and I saw you, and blah, blah, blah. He tells me the story like I described in the beginning of this post. I said, no, that's not me. I am not a prostitute. It was really strange and creepy. I was still somewhat perplexed by this until I told a neighbor a few months later. And apparently, this woman got booted from the building because of the traffic to her apartment. I'm glad the management didn't get us confused as we live on different floors. The complaints of traffic were specific to her apartment. Thank goodness. This happened when I was 17. I was walking home from a party and it was pretty late, probably around 4.30 to 5 a.m., one of my guy friends had decided to walk me home since he didn't want me to walk alone so late. The streets were empty and it was pitch black. As we are walking and chatting, we notice that a man is walking up to us. When he approaches us, he starts saying over and over again, Hey, I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy, I promise. He didn't seem threatening and I remember that I didn't feel scared. Maybe because I was with my friend, who is an athletic person. 
So this guy starts asking us for money to buy a sandwich and tells us that he can't return home until 10 a.m. because his neighbor has a restraining order against him. Apparently, the neighbor leaves for work at that hour. At that point, we were like, what the fuck is going on? We decided to give him some money so he would leave us alone. We gave him around 5 euros, which is more than enough to buy a sandwich. We then lied and told him that's all we had. Then, this man looks at me and says, No, that's not true. You have more money in your wallet. I can see it from here. At that point, I just put my wallet back into my purse and told him I couldn't give him more money. As we were walking away from this man, he once again catches up to us and says, Why don't you guys come with me to try and find a vending machine? And that way you make sure I'm not spending your money on drugs. I don't exactly remember what we told him, but there was no way we were going anywhere with him. Even though I didn't feel scared or threatened at that moment, in hindsight, it was kind of creepy. I'm just glad my friend insisted on walking me home. Was he just desperate for money, or did he have other intentions? Hi everyone, this situation has been ongoing for many, many months, and I'm interested to hear others' perception and any possible advice. I have lived in my apartment complex since 2021, it's a pretty big place with lots of buildings, lots of people, and lots of dogs. I have a dog myself who is unfortunately reactive. I generally just keep to myself when walking her and pivot if we see someone walking towards us. Many months ago, I started seeing this guy show up at the same time I walked my dog. He would be walking to the dog park on the far back entrance. He sees how my dog is and makes no attempt to give us space. In fact, there are times where he even gets closer to us. This has happened for months. I begin to think maybe he's just dense, unaware or whatever, and think maybe he's just trying to let his dog play early in the morning before work. So I start taking my dog out 30 minutes earlier. He starts coming out at the same time too, 30 minutes earlier. Again, he does not try to avoid me even when I'm actively trying to get away from him. He has never said a word to me. He's constantly showing up right after I leave no matter what time or how often I deviate from my schedule. The other day, I was out with my mom walking my dog, and we see him across the parking lot walking towards us. He has always expected me to move out of the way even though I'm there first. Plus, my dog is going to the bathroom, so I can't move. He walks like two feet to the right of us, so of course my dog is going ballistic. My mom noticed too, and said that's weird. Well, tonight it happened again. I said screw it, I will move out of his way because I don't want to deal with the headache. So I move off the sidewalk and walk next to this fence, keeping my dog on a tight leash because she's freaking out, as we're almost right next to each other, but several feet apart. I look over and see he's kind of behind me and still walking towards the park. I get back on the sidewalk and my dog suddenly jumps behind me in a protective stance. I turn around and this man was standing less than 10 feet behind me, facing me and staring, not saying a word. What are your thoughts? And how should I address this creepy neighbor? I was working at a mobile late one night in my hometown, which is a summer vacation hotspot, when I saw a middle-aged man who looked like he just walked off the golf course. He was obviously a little drunk, but drunk middle-aged men who golf was the norm for tourists, so I took no heed. He came up to the counter and I heard him ask if there were any gay bars in town, I told him no, that the closest one I was aware of was in Provincetown. A gay hotspot which was an optimistic hour drive away with traffic. He then asked me if I was interested in fooling around with him. I replied no, 
and in an attempt to soften the rejection, I joked. But I don't think my girlfriend would be too happy about that, which seemed to excite the guy as he redoubled his efforts. His big pitch was that he had an especially nice van that we could pull into the garage bay to use. Granted, it looked like a nice van, but it didn't sway my stance. After another five minutes, he seemed to resign to his fate and he left the store. I thought we were done and I went back to reading. Half an hour later, I hear a car start up and leave the lot. I didn't realize he just stayed in his van and was waiting for me. I figured, creepy, but whatever, he's gone, so I put it out of my mind. A couple hours after that, I was closing up shop. I had to go out on a ladder to change the prices on the sign for the next day. The town is deserted at this point, and all the lights at the station were off, save a couple in the garage. While I'm up on the ladder, the same van screeches back into the lot. I'm up on a ladder, in the dark, alone, not really thrilled about this development. He hopped out and hollered, I forgot to pay you. I figured that I'd given him smokes or something and just forgot to charge him as I was rejecting his advances. So I asked him, for what? He replied, I forgot to try and pay you for a good time. I paused. He yelled, $250. It occurred to me that I could probably just take the guy's money and run, but I correctly assessed that that would be really stupid. So I yelled, fuck man. No means no. Still on the ladder. He yelled, Jesus Christ, fine, and peeled out. I never saw him again, thankfully. I'm 19 years old and living far from home in a studio room. I'm often up late, and last week I was doing some laundry at around 11pm-ish. I saw a man sitting in the lobby. I saw him around a bit at night, but I didn't think much of it. I'm in the laundry room. I just put my clothes in a dryer, and I hear the laundry room door beeping. It meant someone was coming in. There was the man, standing there with no clothes to watch, just staring at me. I maneuvered around him and headed to the lifts. He followed me quickly and cornered me and asked for my snapchat. I was tired and just wanted to get back to my room, so I stupidly gave it to him. I figured he'd message and try to flirt. I'd say, I have a boyfriend, sorry if you thought this was anything else, and that would be the end of it. So I'm about 5 foot 4 with very long red hair and I'm half Indian English with Afghanistani descent. So I'm white passing, but kind of exotic, but people tend to stare at me. Anyway, he starts messaging me. It's kind of normal, then he starts saying weird stuff like, I saw you a month ago and I was impressed. I've been visiting a friend and staying here, and I've been watching you. I noticed that you come out mostly at night. He told me that he was Saudi Arabian and only visiting for five more days. Then it gets worse. He says, I love you, I can't help it. And then I say I have a boyfriend and he says, I only want you. And continues to completely ignore that. He asks to come to my room and I said no. And he wanted a hug. He asked me if I lived alone and if I was a virgin. He kept saying he loved me and that I was perfect for him, that I impressed him. At that point, I recorded all the messages on Snapchat, spoke to him a bit more to gather evidence so I could take it to the reception in the morning. He's been watching me for a month. I got my guy friend who lives on the second floor to walk me down to the laundry room. We sat in the student lounge area and my friend calmed me down. I was shaking with adrenaline and fear. We saw him around the laundry room again looking for me, but luckily I'd already picked up my stuff. I ran back to my room and my friend says that I can stay in his room, but I said it's okay, I'll just lock my door. 
It's about 1am and I hear someone outside my room trying to get in. I ask my friend if he's outside my room and he said no, so I just froze. I didn't want to make a sound. I felt sick to my stomach and helpless. Eventually it stopped and whoever it was went away. In the morning I reported this to reception and then went to stay a few days with my boyfriend then after went to London to visit a friend. And last night was the first time I'd spent a night in my room since this happened. I'm very paranoid now. Sadly, I should probably be used to this. It's not the first time I've been sexually harassed. One guy tried to kiss me in a club by grabbing my head, and a bunch of other things have happened that I won't go into here. But anyway, I'm terrified to go outside my room after dark. I'm constantly looking over my shoulder and feeling paranoid. I just keep blaming myself for being too nice, and I know it's my long thick hair that attracts people's eyes to me. I just want to cut it all off. Has anyone else had a similar experience? How did you deal with it? Oh, and reception still hasn't updated me on if he's still in the building. I'm just going to include several experiences I had while delivering pizza for a popular chain a long time ago. I live in a small rural town in the southeast US and it has the usual suburban developments as well as some more outlying country in rural areas. When I was younger, just as I'd moved out on my own, I worked as a pizza delivery guy. These are some of the creepy encounters I had during this time. Story 1 the orgy. One afternoon, I got a delivery order for an area of town I rarely, if ever, visited. It was on the east side of town, which was very run down and poor. An old textile mill used to employ many in that area, but it had been closed for some time and been overrun with kutsu and had begun falling apart. The houses around this area often had failing foundations and were very old rusty trailer homes. This particular order was to one of the trailer homes. I knocked and no one answered. I tried again for several minutes as I could hear music coming from the inside and I figured maybe they couldn't hear me. When they finally opened the door, it was a skinny guy with no shirt on and he asked me to step inside. When I walked in, there was a lady behind him who was wearing a robe and another sketchy couple standing at the back of the room. They had a boombox playing loud country music. These people were high and drunk, which I was used to, but this place was buzzing with crazy. All of them were at least 10 years older than me, and as I sat the pizza down and waited for payment, they started making sexual comments regarding my body. Whenever one would say something, another would encourage them to continue. Eventually, the guy who opened the door walked over to me and the lady behind him said, Go ahead and pay the man. He handed me the cash and put his free hand on my arm and in a hot breath of full natural light, he whispered in my ear and asked, We're all about to have sex. Do you want to join us? I said, No thanks and made a beeline for the door. And story number two, the creeper. I got two orders from the same area of town I talked about before. One was a 20 pie order for a church fellowship hall, and the other a single pie for a residence. I dropped the pies for the church off first, then headed over to the last customer. When I arrived, I immediately noticed the house looking off-putting, dark and dirty. I was like, Please let this be the wrong house. But it wasn't. There was a creepy, old, naked doll on the porch, and an empty birdcage hung from one of the trees in the side yard. I got out, grabbed the pizza, and slowly walked up to the house. I tried the doorbell, which was glowing, so I figured it worked. No one answered, so I tried knocking. Again, nothing. 
Eventually I got creeped out, so I started walking back to my car. Halfway to my car I heard, psst, and turned around to see an old man with wild and unkempt hair, literally peeking his head out from the back of the house. It was getting dark out, and my patience was draining, so I was not in the mood for someone playing games. I simply said, did you order this pizza, and waited for him to answer but he ducked back out of sight. I started to just turn to leave, but then he peeked out again. I said, Sir, is this your pizza or not? And finally he emerges. He walks up to me carrying a shovel of all things. He said, Yeah man, sorry, I'm just messing. I don't mean nothing by it. To which I just responded with the total and held the pizza out. Luckily, that was the end of the transaction, and I was able to get out of there. I worked the same job for a few years, and had plenty more weird experiences, but I then moved on to find something better and safer. If you work delivering items to people at their homes, stay safe, and never go inside their house. This happened pretty much an hour ago. I was pulling up to my house with my mom when she says, Who is at our house? Me, being confused, looks at our yard. Then I see someone walking up to us. My mom said he was trying to open the door and get in. Hey, I just lost my job. I was looking for somewhere to work. Could you help? The guy asks. I can't remember what my mom said but it was basically no because of what he's about to ask. Could you spare a couple of dollars? He asks. Sure, if you want to come to this side, I can give you a couple of bucks, my mom says. Thank you, he replied. My mom gives him some money. They then start to talk about how he should take it as a blessing and to pass it to someone else. He says my mom is an angel. Then they start to talk about other things I can't remember. Then the man disappears. My mom starts to drive around to find the man to make sure he's left, as she understandably doesn't feel safe getting out. We start to drive around. She calls her boyfriend and my dad. Then there's a cop car on the side of the road. Hey, there was a middle-aged man on my doorstep with the screen door open. Then he walked up to my car and asked for work this late at night, which I found suspicious. He asked for money, and I gave him some, my mom told the cop. Where do you live? The cop replied. My mom told him, and the cop said they'd follow. We drive back home with the cop following. He inspects the front and backyard, but there's no one. We decided it's safe to go back in. I talked to my mom about it, and she said he could have just been drunk and at the wrong house, since it was St. Patrick's Day and that people like to get drunk on that day. But I highly doubt that, as I find it weird that as soon as he saw us pulling up, he came to our car with a sob story. Take this information as you will, though. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you have a scary story you would like me to read in an upcoming video, this is one way to help me guarantee variety in the stories I share. You can email me or post it to my subreddit. I'll drop the details in the video description. Thank you all for listening, and a special thanks to my patrons and channel members who now have early access to ad-free videos as well as other behind-the-scenes content. Thank you to Vicky Howell, Gloria, Ashley Juster, Celsa Rundle, Merciful Humming, Carol Zaffirano, Melissa Moore, Dixie Busby, Michelle Green, Misty Rakur, Michelle Brooks, Lavina Cordelia, Kirby Harris, Angie Lindop, Rebecca James, Mason Hayes, Chelsea Moffat, Lisa Prentice, Michelle and Kevin, Amanda M, Rebecca Morris, Jennifer, Jessica Lasley, Brock Bollard, 
Kim Thompson, Angela Reeves, Sherry Agbehi, Nathan Shadwick, Nicholas Johnson, Samantha Place, Cheryl Duckworth, Scoutmonk405, Z Harris, Unladylike13, Ventura CA, Elizabeth Mayers, Alexia Tuttle, Marshana Rainey, Yolo Sapien, Mary Wright, Jessica Copperfield, Zoe D, Danielle Scholl, Jane Wiggins, Tara Harris, Mary Wright, Kelly Townsend, M, Deshaun Edmondson, Kimmy Love, Wendy Maris, Confessions of a Cleaner, Megan Abrams, Miss Tycoon, Stephen Sloan, Christina Myway, Ashley Bray, Madisa Felter, Danielle, Tina Marie Heckman, Amal Garner, Lisa Radford, Deborah Malays, Connie Sue, Taya Adwell, Diana Johnston, Vampy Debs, Jasmine Davis, Erica Asir, Fox Mulder, Ram Beltran, Tina, Nick Bigdowski, Sarah C.H., Neil Cavanaugh, Tierra Sanders, Timothy Stratton, Jennifer Jenkins, Lloyd Rash, Maribel De Luna, Michael O'Malley, Marissa, Kuro, Amber Hobbs, King Slim, Justin Beast Gillespie, Joy Dana, Jay Bardle, Anissa, Stephanie McLaren, Lumini Kami, Skin Crawler, Adiara, Bella Place 2006, Michelle Welchman, Dana B, Lisa McDonald, Clary Scott, Madison C, Wasp Sting, Jennifer J, Ashley, Lily Pan, Lee, Taya, Wyatt, Gina, Laura, JK06, Fenrizio, Donna, Joey, Big GSC, Tanya, Spaghetti Yolo King, Matthew, October Gypsy, Lisa, Ali, Thomas, Build With Me, Leticia, Fran, Debs, Insomnicats, Stephanie, Summer, Rebecca, Tyra, This Bad Kitty, Your Pappy's Dilly, Laney, Tripping Balls Through History, Samantha, Erica, Alyssa, Tracy, Killian's Place, April, James Arterburn, Jen, Joy, Handout, Pegasus Genesis, Karen Keating, V. Berry, LJ, Fiona X Fox, Scott, I Like Booty, Monica Level Ace, Chris and Donna, Holly Spry, Kimber, Jasmine, Sanitix, Heather Haven, Kitty Cat Luna 2, ADHD Aurora, Janice, Cinderella Baby, Borderline Betty, Lady Draco, Erica Nicole, Snowball Rathena, Melanie, The Honeybee 987, Pretty Girl 215, Ryan, Brooke, Wendy, Crafty Cow, Tina, Dina, Vampy Debs, Patricia, Amber, Krista, Brenda, Absent Alice, Christy, Kay, Spider's Web, Ooh La La Andrea, Sue, Monique, Sean Gorman, Emma Lisa, Sigma Cube X, Greg, Chelsea, Amanda Jane, Sam, Zeb Tepe, Sarah C, Austin, Tegan, Lil Smart, Jenny, Gabrielle, Fire 05, Sarah P, James Gargano, Gemma Allen, Monica Level Ace, and Alex. I hope you're doing well, guys. I'll see you all on the next one.